Good morning. Good morning. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. We continue to celebrate this Easter season, the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, and we're glad to have all of you here, both members and guests. We do ask that you fill out one of the uh, cards that are the shepherding forms that you see at the back, especially as we have opportunity today to come to the Lord's table. Uh, it helps us in our shepherding here at St. John, so we greatly appreciate that if you would do that for us. As we worship today, we'll be following the order of service that's in your bulletin. Hopefully you picked it up on the way in. Uh, there was also another sheet back there. We ran off about 30 of them. For those people who were going to sing a new hymn, it's a uh, uh, Ethan Chris and Getty hymn, Resurrection hymn, for our sermon hymn. And uh, because it's new, I thought if some of you would like music, uh, if you read music, uh, there is a sheet with the music back there that you could follow along. Um, musical notes as well. So that's there to enhance uh, our ability to be able to sing. We're going to sing it a few times during this Easter season just uh, so we get used to it and familiar with it and, and it becomes a part of uh, our, uh, our uh, group of hymns that we know. As we worship today, just one announcement from your bulletin, the LWML is doing a main gathering. You can see some of the items that they're gathering inside of your bulletin in order to, again, be of service to people in our community. Uh, by the way, John Denneke has some sheets back there, so if you, if you would like a music um, sheet, just raise your hand and, and don't get one. Okay. All right, well, today, as we continue celebrating the precious uh, uh, day of Easter, uh, we uh, uh, begin with our opening hymn, which is another Easter hymn. Would you rise and join me in singing with joy, Christ the Lord is risen.
Almighty God in His mercy has uh, given His only Son, Jesus Christ, to die for you. And for His sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of the Word, I, and by His authority, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen.
Now a man who was lame from birth was being carried to the tent, temple gate called Beautiful, where he was put every day to beg from those going into the temple courts. And when he saw Peter and John about to enter, he asked them for money. Peter looked straight at him as did John. Then Peter said, look at us. So the man gave him his attention, expecting to get something from them. And then Peter said, silver or gold I do not have, but what I do have I give to you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. Taking him by the right hand, he helped him up, and instantly the man's feet and ankles became strong. He jumped to his feet and began to walk, and then he went with them into the temple courts, walking and jumping and praising God. When all the people saw him walking and praising God, they recognized him as the same man who used to sit begging at the temple gate called Beautiful, and they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. While the men held on to Peter and John, all the people were astonished, and they came running to them in the place called Solomon's Colonnade. When Peter saw this, he said to them, Fellow Israelites, why does it surprise you? Why do you stare at us as if by our own power or godliness we made this man walk? The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of our fathers, has glorified his servant Jesus. You handed him over to be killed, and you disowned him before Pilate, though he had decided to let him go. You disowned the Holy and Righteous One and asked that a murderer be released to you. You killed the author of life, but God raised him from the dead. We are witnesses of this. And it's by faith in the name of Jesus that this man whom you see and know was made strong. It is Jesus' name and the faith that comes through him that has completely healed him, as you can see. Now, fellow Israelites, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did your leaders, but this is how God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets, saying that his Messiah would suffer. Repent then, and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out, and that times of refreshing may come from the Lord, and that he may send the Messiah who has been appointed for you, even Jesus. Heaven must receive him until the time comes for God to restore everything as he promised long ago through his holy prophets. For Moses said, The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among your own people. You must listen to everything he tells you. And anyone who doesn't listen to him will be completely cut off from their people. This is the word of the Lord. Our epistle reading, our New Testament letter reading, comes from John's first letter, the first chapter. He encourages us to confess our sins, to get us out of the darkness and into the light of the God who has loved us in Christ Jesus. And he does it in these words. If we claim to have fellowship with him, and yet we walk in the darkness, we lie. We don't live out the truth. But if we walk in the light as he's in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus' his Son purifies us from all sin. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth isn't in us. But if we confess our sins, then God is faithful and just. And he will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. If we claim that we have not sinned, we make him out to be a liar. And his word is not in us. Now, my dear children, I write this to you so that you will not sin. But if anybody does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the Righteous One. He's the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not only for ours, but also for the sins of the whole world. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I invite you to rise for the gospel preparation first. John chapter 20. 
on the evening of that first day of the week when the disciples were together with the doors locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and sighed, and the disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I'm sending you. And with that he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone his sins, they are forgiven, and if you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. Now Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. And so the other disciples told him, We've seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the nail marks in his hands, and put my finger where the nails were, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe it. Well, a week later, his disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came, and he stood among them and said, Peace be with you. And then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here, see my hands, reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. And Thomas said to him, My Lord and my God. And then Jesus told him, Because you've seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet, excuse me, have believed. Jesus did many other miraculous signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing, you may have life in his name. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. I invite you to be seated, and we got some kids who want to come forward for a children's lesson. Come on up. Come on up. I want to find a seat on the steps there. That's good. Okay. So today I got with me some, some crutches. What do you use crutches for? For walking, do well, you use crutches? Only when? When you got a leg or a foot or something else that's hurt. And then you have to use crutches, right? And, um, and, and that works real good, but what, what would it be like if you had to use crutches your whole life? Most people use crutches for a short period of time, right? While their leg is healing. But what if you always had to use crutches? Or what if you not only didn't have one leg that was hurting, you had two legs that were hurting. Could you use crutches then? Can I walk like this? No, I'd fall right over. And that's the way the man was in our text today. It tells us that every day his legs were broken. They weren't working well. He was lame, we say. say. And, and so he, he, uh, he couldn't walk. So what did they do? Could he work? No, he couldn't work. So what did they do? His friends would bring them, and you can imagine if this would happen, he would bring them to the entrance of the temple. So that would be like to the entrance of church. And every day they would sit him there, and he would sit with some kind of uh, vessel, maybe a cup, maybe a bowl. And when people were going in and out, he would say, can you spare me some money? Because obviously I can't work because my legs don't work, right? And can you imagine what that'd be like if every time we came to church, there'd be somebody sitting there who couldn't walk? That's what it was like. And Peter and John, two of Jesus' disciples, were coming to the temple, it says, to pray. There were two times that, 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 that they offered sacrifices and prayers at the temple. Every day at sunrise, the very first thing in the morning, and at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. This was 3 o'clock in the afternoon. They're walking in. Here's this man who can't walk, and he's holding his bowl or his cup or whatever, and he says, you have some spare change? Can you help me out? And did you hear what, you, what Peter said? He said, I don't have any silver or gold. Sorry. No money. But what I do have, I'll give to you. And he said to him, 
name of Jesus, walk. And he grabbed him by an arm, tells us he took his arm, and he helped him to his feet. And the guy could feed it, feel it as his feet and his ankles get strong again. I imagine he did something like this, you know, and said, wow, those things that weren't working, they're working now. And they had worked, it tells us in the Bible, for over 40 years. And, and all of a sudden, they're working. And you know what he did? He went into the temple with Peter and John, but he didn't just walk. It tells us that he jumped. Could you imagine how happy he was? What would it be like if everybody in church started jumping? <laughs> I can tell you they do that now. When they're singing songs, they jump. Because he was so excited. He was so filled with joy. And, and what he's teaching us today is that he can heal not only our legs, but especially our hearts. It's Jesus who died and rose again. And he wants to be with us every step of every way. And when we have Jesus, then we can rejoice every day. In good times and bad times, we can be really, really happy that he's with us each and every day. And that's what the coloring sheet I have for you. One side is the guy jumping. And the other side is a maze to get Peter and John to the man so he can help him. Okay? But let's uh, pray and ask God to help us share the joy of Jesus in our own hearts and the hearts of others this Easter. Would you pray with me? I invite the congregation to pray along. Dear Jesus, Dear Jesus, thank you for rising from the dead. Confirming that you are alive. Confirming that you are alive. Because your disciples saw you. Because your disciples saw you. And they touched you. And they touched you. And they heard your voice. And they heard your voice. Thank you for the healing you bring to me. Thank you for the healing you bring to me. In my body. In my body. And in my heart. And in my heart. Help me to share my joy. With others around me. Amen. Amen. Well, thanks for coming up today. You guys can head back to your seats, and we will sing that uh, new resurrection hymn um, from the days that we celebrate. <laughs>
Savior Jesus. Amen. Our text is that uh, first lesson from the book of Acts, Acts chapter 3, the healing of the blind man. And to uh, kind of get started in, in this text, and thinking especially about how they saw the disciples and the disciples saw him, I thought I'd, I'd just reflect a little bit on, on a book. Um, called My Name is Asher Left. It's uh, Chen Potuk's main character in this book is a, an awakening artist who all of a sudden starts to see the world a little differently from a different perspective. And uh, the author uh, captures a simple moment at a family dinner when this emerging artist uh, starts to see it a different way. It, it says this, it says, that was the night I began to realize that something was happening to my eyes. I looked at my father and I saw the lines and the planes in his face that I'd never seen before. I could feel with my eyes. I could feel my eyes moving across the lines around his face, eyes and, and into and over the deep furrows of his forehead. He was 35 years old, and there were lines on his face uh, and his forehead. And I could feel the lines of, uh, with my eyes and feel, too, the long, straight, flat bridge of his nose, the clear darkness of his eyes, the strong, thick curves of his red eyebrows, and the thick red hair of his beard, gray just a little. I saw the gray strand uh, in the tangle of the hair below his lips, and I could feel the, the lines and points and planes. I could feel the tex texture and color, and I felt myself flooded with the shapes and textures of the world around me. At that moment, I closed my eyes, but I could still see that way inside my head. I was seeing, you see, with another pair of eyes that had suddenly come away suddenly come awake. You see, this is what Easter does to us. It gives us a new set of eyes. And it gives us a new heart, a new way of understanding that suddenly helps us get, get come away. What if we changed and could change the way we look at people? If we paid attention to people with a new set of eyes that it suddenly, is, as the author says, come away? Might we see the helpless and hopeless condition of people with whom we come into contact every day? Noticing may be the first step in bringing somebody the good news about Jesus and the kingdom of God. And we begin to see others and ourselves and even God differently. People we never noticed before because we never paid attention to them quite suddenly matter. And they matter to us in ways that we can't explain. And this is what we see Peter and John experiencing in the text. In the text with this uh, healing of the lame man. This lame man had been laid there um, pretty much every single day of his life. And Peter and John, along with the rest of the disciples, were still in the habit of doing the, the rituals uh, of uh, those who were from uh, Israel. And that meant going to the temple, especially not so much at the sunrise one, people were off to work then, but often at 3 o'clock there would be a lot of people coming to the temple to pray because that was the hour of prayer and sacrifice. And all of a sudden they see a man that they hadn't perhaps seen in the same way. And they, they, they see him and they assist him in a way that they were able to assist him and then through him assisting others around them and calling them in their Easter faith in these words, repent them, turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out, that times of refreshing might come from the Lord and that he might send the Christ who has been appointed for you. And so today we want to focus on the verbs uh, in this uh, particular text that God calls us uh, in our Easter faith to be refreshed, repenting, refreshed, and rejoicing. Repenting, refreshed, and rejoicing. So it starts at this uh, temple gate, and, and Luke in the book of Acts calls it the, the beautiful gate. The problem is, is nobody knows which gate it is because uh, there was no gate to the temple that officially had the name beautiful. There were beautiful and very ornate gates, yes, 
And perhaps one of them in their day and age was called especially beautiful, we don't know. But the reality is, is we really don't know exactly what date this is, probably the one that leads from the court of the Gentiles into the court of the women is what most scholars guess. And, and here this uh, fellow had been laid by his friends and family every single day because of his inability to walk. And, and what's really interesting here is that um, the very first thing we see in this text is, is they notice Peter, but more importantly, uh, you, you can guess that a lot of people when they walk by him wouldn't pay him much attention, might even purposely look in another direction, pretending they heard something over there. Something so they didn't have to face the, 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 the man. But what Peter and John do in says is they look directly at, at them. And they say to him, look at us. You see, what Peter and John are doing is they're noticing and they're engaging in a relationship with this fellow uh, in, in a way that communicates that they care. The following story was shared by uh, Ed Salmon. He's a pastor from South Carolina uh, who went home to his Lord in 2016, but he was at a conference and and he was uh, addressing a bunch of other pastors, and he says this. Just yesterday, I went out for lunch. When I got to Forest Park, there is usually a homeless man or two standing there. And there was a terribly disheveled man standing there with his sign, I'm homeless. And of course, he was going by the cars, and nobody looked at him. He got to my car, and I rolled down the window, and I said, I don't have any money with me, but my wife is going to take me to the airport in about an hour and a half, and I, I'll have something for you then. And you know what he said to me? He said, thanks for looking at me. I said, he didn't say a word about money. He just said, thank you for looking at me. And, and, and this was his application as he spoke to those pastors. He said, you, you see the good shepherd? He's raising you up so that the world in which you live can look at you and say, thank you for looking at me, because in that I see the love, the care, and the glory of God. So Peter, much like Ed Solomon says, silver and gold I have no. But what I have, I'll give to you. And he says, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise, walk. And it tells us that he grabs him by the hand, and Luke, being the physician, especially notes not just his feet or his legs, but especially his ankles, and uses a, a technical medical term for ankle in this particular text. And, and then the man stands. And you can imagine how grateful he is. And you don't have to imagine because our text tells us what he did. He celebrated this precious gift. And he went up, uh, jumping and leaping and, and uh, around the, the temple. And, and people recognized him and, and they wondered what in the world happened. And this gave Peter an opportunity to say something that... Um, he wouldn't have said even three or four weeks earlier, because three or four weeks earlier, where was he? He was in locked rooms. Why? We heard it in the gospel lesson for fear of the Jews. You know, so you see, one of the proofs of the resurrection is to see the radical transformation that happens in these men who have physically witnessed the living Christ. And there's nothing that's going to get in the way, nothing that's going to stop them Nothing that's going to hinder them from laying it all out there, which Peter does. And so he says to them, he says, why are you so surprised? Why does this surprise you, fellow Israelites? And he goes on to say, you killed the author of life, but God raised him from the dead. We are witnesses of this. And he points to the reason why he can say what he's saying. Because he's seen the risen Christ, because he knows the power of his love and of his life and and he says to them, why do you stare at us as if by our own power or godliness we made this man walk? And, and, and Peter asks these two why questions, but he doesn't wait for an answer. 
They are rhetorical questions, so he answers it himself. It's by faith in the name of Jesus, this man whom you see and know was made strong. It is Jesus' name and the faith that comes through him that has completely healed him, as you all can see. Now, you and I might wonder a little bit about this, uh, this address of the crowd by Peter, because did you hear what he said? He said, you killed the author of life. And I know that you acted in ignorance as did your leaders. You didn't realize who he is. You couldn't see who Jesus truly was. Your sight was blinded. And you and I might say, you know, there's this all this discussion about what's the unforgivable sin. You'd say, well, this seems pretty unforgivable. You know? You killed Jesus. How is God going to let you skate on that one? But you know it's not the unforgivable sin. The only unforgivable sin in the Bible is it says blasphemy, blasphemy against the Holy Spirit, which is telling you God, go stick it, God. I don't want to have anything to do with it. That's the only unforgivable sin. In fact, this sin was quite forgivable, and so uh, Peter invites them to that forgiveness. He says, repent then and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out. That times of refreshing may come from the Lord and that he can send you the Messiah who has been appointed for you, even Jesus. And boy, I tell you, that's good news for you and me. Because when we ask, ask the question, who killed Jesus, we know that the answer was not just the Israelites uh, who lived in Jerusalem, who cried for his death, but it was you and me as well. But the reason Jesus hung on that cross is for your sin and for my sin, and so very really we can say, I killed Jesus. I'm a Judas. I sometimes betrayed him. I'm a Peter. Sometimes I open my mouth and need to put my foot in it. I'm like the Pharisee, sometimes pretentious on the outside, but not so good on the inside. I'm like the soldiers. I'm a sinner. It was me and my sin that killed him. And to you and me, when we stand in that place, our, our Lord says to us the same words that Peter spoke on this day. Repent and turn to God so that your sins might be wiped out and that times of refreshing might come to you. You see, this is a call for us to continually be in that state of repentance, recognizing that uh, that our lives aren't perfect, and it's for those sins that we commit that Jesus also died. But also to come to him for that refreshing that comes from knowing that we're forgiven fully and freely, that when we come to the cross just as we are, with tears of repentance running down our face to see him nailed in our place, we know that we're saved by his love by his sacrifice. He laid it out for you and for me. And when you hear that good news, when you know that your sins have been wiped out, the Bible uses so many different analogies to help drive home the, the, the truth, the reality that sin is gone. He blots it out. That's when you take a clay cabinet, you made a mistake, and you get it wet, and you take your thumb and you blot out the mistake that you made. He removes it as far as the east is from the west. You, it, as long as you're going east around this world, you're never going to get west because you can always go further east. The point is, is that uh, that when God takes away sin, He takes the, it, it away completely. It can't come back to touch us anymore. When your sins are wiped out, when you've experienced those times of refreshing then it's time to rejoice. And that's when we see this man doing it. It says he jumped to his feet. Jumped to his feet. That's what he did. He didn't just stand up slowly. He jumped to his feet. He began to walk. And then he was walking around with them in the temple. And then he was jumping and he was praising God and he was holding on to Peter and John because he was so thankful. And when you and I understand the, the depth of God's forgiveness for us, we can't help but rejoice. We can't help but what uh, John said in the epistle lesson, to want to get out of the darkness and walk in his light. To rejoice so much that we can't help but jump and praise 
the God who has blessed us in this way because he took care of our sins and raised Jesus from the dead. And when we live lives that have been transformed by the gospel, when we treat our, our husbands and wives, our children and our parents and our brothers and sisters and, and our neighbors differently because we see them differently, because we see the value that they have in the eyes of the Lord Jesus and, and we, we notice and we look like Peter and John did this day, then those people are going to ask us what they asked about this man. What in the world has gotten into you? And the answer to that in this Easter season, is it's Jesus. Jesus has got me to me. And he gives me different eyes, and he empowers me to do different things with my hands because of the love and grace that he has given to me. There once was a really successful business owner whose business, uh, his company, had faithfully served uh, several million customers for many years, but uh, lately the business hadn't been so good, competitors were waiting for him to fail. And to try to encourage his employees, he hosted a dinner in which he thought he would unveil a plan that would help save the company. And he wanted each of them to recognize that the future success of the company depended not just on what he did, not the plan that he had, but on each and every one of them who were there at that dinner that day. And uh, the morning of the dinner, he was sitting in his office working on his speech when his wife came in. And she said to him, uh, can you watch our seven-year-old son for an hour or two while I run some errands? And at first, he, he wanted to say, I really need this time to work on my, uh, my presentation. But something, he says, caught his tongue, and he reluctantly agreed. When his wife was gone about 15 minutes, he heard a knock on the door. And his son said, Dad, I'm bored. So the man uh, tried to uh, amuse his son for the next uh, half hour, 45 minutes, and while he was still trying to work on his speech. And knowing that he really needed some dedicated time, he got an idea. He saw a magazine. He picked it up. He started paging through it. And he found a map of the world. And, um, and so what he did is he ripped that page out. He, he went into the living room, and he started to rip that page into all kinds of little pieces and scattered them around the living room. And then he said to his son, son, if you can put all the pieces of the map of the world together, I'll give you $20. And the boy immediately began gathering pieces. Uh, he wanted the extra $20 because uh, there was a video game he wanted, and it uh, since his uh, seventh birthday, his last birthday. And, and so his dad returned to his office thinking, well, I really got it this time, good strategy. Figured it would take him at least an hour to do that test because he figured his son didn't have any real idea what the, the world looked like on a world map. But uh, 10 minutes later, he gets a knock on the door. And there stood his son with a completed map of the world. And his dad was amazed, and he said, son, how did you finish it so quickly? He said, well, he says, you know, dad, I had no idea what the map of the world looked like. But as I was picking up the pieces, I noticed on the back of the map of the world, there was an image of a man. And I could put together the pieces of the man. So I laid out a sheet of paper, and I put together the picture of the man. I put another sheet of paper on top of it. I flipped them over there was the world. He said, I figured that if I got the man right, then the rest of the world would fall into place. You see, that's what's at the heart of the gospel. When you get the man right, the God-man Jesus Christ right, he can transform your heart and your life in such a way that he starts to set your world in order as well. And he gives you a new set of eyes to see people in a different way and to, to serve them in a different way. Henry Nowen, uh, um, a 
great author said, you know, when it comes to Jesus, when you've got that piece of the puzzle, it starts to set everything right. And in another place he said this. He said, pay attention to the people God puts in your path if you want to discern what God is up to in your life. That day, God laid a lame man in Peter and John's path. And you and I are reading about it 2,000 years later. All because Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. And in the resurrected Christ, we see somebody who sees us where we are and addresses the healing that we need and then gives us eyes so that we can see others around us with the eyes with which he sees us. So let's go this day continuing to repent, continuing to be refreshed, and to continuing to rejoice. And to bless others when they say, what in the world got into you? By saying to them the blessing on this card, may you know the joy of his resurrection, the abundance of his life, the peace of his presence, and the wonder of his love. In the name of Jesus, amen. Please rise. <laughs> Now the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and his peace will the reign in your heart. His resurrection joy now and forever. And let's confess our faith together uh, using the explanation of the second article from Luther's Creed. Confess. I believe that Jesus Christ, true God, begat the Father.
treatments, recuperation, and hospice care, along with Charlene and Steve and Elijah, Perry and Dorothy, and all those we lift up before you in our hearts, grant health and safety to Alexis Washington and her unborn child, and fill our shut-ins with your joy as they walk with you the resurrection and the life. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Risen Lord Jesus, in loving grace, you welcome your children home from this world to heaven. We ask that you would comfort Ed Major and his family at the death of his wife Elizabeth, along with all who are grieving the loss of loved ones at this Easter time, who have come home to your presence. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. And risen Lord Jesus, lead all who serve in harm's way for us with your presence especially our first responders and members of the armed forces who serve for us here and around the world. Lead those who follow you to see you and to see those they serve differently using the gifts you've given them in their Easter lives, especially Chrissy and Ryan and Julia and David, Benjamin and Christian. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. The risen Lord Jesus, help us call others to repentance, refreshing and rejoicing in the victory you've won for us over sin and death in our Glen Mac River Fox Bay Shore Brown Lofty community. Rekindle your spirit's fire in the hearts of the lost and those who have strayed from your fold, that they might repent and be refreshed and rejoice with you again at the cross and empty tomb. Give to our college students peace and joy as they deal with daily deadlines and stresses of their education, and be with our young uh, adults who serve in the military service and and, and in workplaces. Touch the lives of many through the ministries of a place of refuge, refugee resettlement, homes for the aged and handicapped and other service organizations. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. And risen Lord Jesus, make each of our homes places of repentance, refreshing and rejoicing in your victory over sin and death. Thankful with Patty Pulser for the blessings you give each day. Continue to bless her business with uh, growth and success. Continue to bring resurrection comfort to Patty and Brian Pratt as they grieve the death of uh, their mother and grandmother in these last few months. Uh, surround them with your love. And we join Daniel, Jenna, and Austin Privich in thankfulness for a safe trip to Florida and the ability with the vaccine to share life once again in family gatherings. Keep each of us along with Bob Phillips, Aaron Marine, and Charlotte Black filled daily with resurrection, joy, and sight that sees and serves the that you place in our path. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Lord, now remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our
even for you this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after the supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And also